Hello everyone! In this episode, we are going to start exploring the Backup Motion Control Platform. The goal is to control a low-cost stepper motor using the PLC. In order to do that, we will need to do two things. The first one is commission the axis, and that consists of scanning the hardware, calculating the scaling factor, and setting other parameters. The second one is setting up the PLC to control it. To do that, we will need to link the axis to the PLC and use a state machine to initiate a constant velocity motion. As always, this function block is available for free in my repository. The link is in the description. First of all, go to config mode so you can scan your hardware. Expand the I.O., right-click on devices, and scan. TwinCat will ask you if you would like to automatically create axes associated to your drives. I'm clicking yes. I have three EL7031s connected to an Ethercat coupler EK1100. You need to go to the COE Online tab and make sure that the motor parameters match the step you're using. Also, take note of the base frequency. I'm deleting the axes 2 and 3 since I don't care about them. We need to calculate the scaling factor for this axis. But first, since I don't have a linear actuator, I'm going to change the unit to degrees. Now I can launch the backup stepper calculator to calculate my scaling factor and speed reference. I'm using an EL7031, my base frequency is 2000 steps per second, as we saw in the COE parameters table, my feed constant is 360 degrees per rotation. Now I plug in the calculated values and activate. Let's test it. Make sure that you enable your axis first and set it override. The commanded angular position needs to match reality. Looking pretty good. Let's see how we can drive the axis now using code rather than the GUI. I'll explain the code in a little bit. Let's see what it does first. Import the FBMC velocity that you've downloaded from my repo. The link is in the description. Right click POUs, import PLC Open XML. In the main, Create an instance of this function block, as well as a boolean to start and another one to stop the axis. Call the function block from the main. Hit F2 and search for your instance name to auto-populate. Pass the arguments, a start bit, a stop bit, the acceleration, the deceleration, the direction of rotation, and the speed. 
I forgot to show it here, but you need to add tc2 underscore mc and tc2 underscore mc underscore drive to your references. Now, before you can link the access to the PLC, you need to compile your code first. If you don't do it, the axis won't be able to see the axis wrap variable that bridges the PLC code and the NC task. Once you do it, go to your axis and link the inputs and outputs to the PLC. You want to link main.fbmoveaxis.staxis to both inputs and outputs. Finally, activate your configuration go online and test it. This function block moves an axis at a constant speed. Now, let's have a look on its logic. Okay, this is the function block fb underscore mc velocity. The inputs for this function block are a stop, a start, a reset bit. We also have the acceleration, the deceleration, the direction, and the speed of the motion. The output for this function block is an error bit. The auxiliary variables are an axis underscore ref variable. This variable is a structure that bridges the inputs and outputs of the axis to the PLC and vice versa. This is effectively what connects the axis task to the PLC logic. In this function block, we use four different motion control function blocks. MC power, MC stop, MC velocity, and MC reset. MC power enables the axis. Without an enable bit, an axis cannot move. MC stop stops an axis in a controlled fashion. MC velocity moves an axis at a constant speed, and MC reset resets an axis upon airing out. Uh, we also have a toggle bit that will invert its state every single scan. A couple of rising edge detectors and an enumeration for the states. Outside of the scope of our state machine, we want to execute for every single scan cycle that this function block is called, these four lines of code. The edge detectors, inverting the toggle signal, and reading the axis status. This last line is necessary to evaluate if the axis is enabled, among other things. Our state machine will enable the axis and initiate a constant velocity motion upon detecting a rising edge of the start bit. Upon detection of a rising edge of the stop bit, the state machine will stop and disable the axis. If the axis errors out, it can be reset through MC reset. In the wait state, 
we wait for a rising edge of the start bit. Once it is detected, we make sure that the axis isn't being stopped and we trigger the state transition. In the enable axis state, we enable the axis with a 100% override. If the axis is enabled and the stop button hasn't been pressed, then we go to run. If the axis is enabled but the stop button has been pressed, we go to disable axis state. If an error has been detected, we go to the error state. In the run state, we move the axis and wait for a stop command to transition to the stop state. Also, if an error occurs, the state machine will take us to the error state. In the stop state, MC stop is called and the axis will ramp down to a full stoppage following the deceleration passed as an input. Once the axis stop moving, we go to the disable axis state where the axis enable bit is removed. If everything's okay, the state machine resets back to the wait state. In the error state, MC reset needs to be triggered in order to allow the user to try to jog the axis once again. Thank you.